I'm really fortunate to have been able to hit 100K net worth pretty quickly in life, and I wanted to share with you a very practical step-by-step -step guide to hitting 100K net worth starting from zero. So this is not about age, it's about going from step zero to 100K net worth, hopefully in five years. And I wanted to present a very practical guide that anyone could follow. I hope you enjoy. I came across this CNBC article and I thought it'd make for an interesting video because I noticed that the median net worth was really low. The $100,000 mark isn't even hit until people surpass 45 years old. So I thought I could make this video to show you how to do it pretty quickly. Why 100K is top 1%? Now this is generally aimed at people who are a little younger and uh, I think hitting 100K net worth puts you in that top one, two or 3%. Here's why. Because most people generally have one or two income sources, right? They've got a job, they've got some type of side job, maybe they can make some money here and there, but it is inconsistent. And then a lot of people put money in 401Ks or stocks and you can make a little appreciation like that. However, it's not cash flow. But a lot of people have debt or liabilities. That would be a lot of people have student loan debt, they've got some type of car loan, or they have credit card debt. We can go into all the news articles about Americans and credit card debt. You'd be surprised at how many people are earning six figures per year and living paycheck to paycheck because of their debt. And so if you look at people's actual balance sheets between what debt they have and their income sources, very few people are at a surplus of 100 grand. Here is my kind of story of how I got here real quick because I wanted to show you that I wasn't some high income earner, you know, I wasn't earning 100K right out of college, which hit, you know, would allow me to hit 100K net worth very quickly. I had, I spent many years earning very little money. The best year actually happened to be with Houston Rockets. I made 48K in 10 months, so it was $10 an hour, but the commission definitely helped. But I wanna show you this because I want you to see that you can hit these numbers without having a huge income. So at age 27, I was able to hit the 100K net worth mark. I bought a condo September 2016 when I was 26. By 2018, just two years later, the condo had appreciated quite a bit. I had 25 grand in cash and I had a little over $80,000 in equity in the condo at that time. So that is what allowed me to hit the 100K mark. Here's another chart I came across. How do you compare? Again, I hate comparison syndrome, but this is uh, certainly interesting to see. The thing with this chart that I just don't think it's that accurate. The top 1% numbers might be, however, I just think very few people under the age of 35 have any any type of net worth just because of how much debt are put on Americans at a young age now. And so this is an interesting chart to compare yourself, but I don't think it's that accurate. So why I made this video. A lot of my videos are about you know social media and what you can see on social media and how it's all fake and a fraud and how many frauds are out there and kind of comparing social media with reality. So on social media, you're gonna see everyone feels like a millionaire because you're seeing all the outliers, all the people that can afford the certain things that get your attention. Right now, crypto returns 10,000%. If you're not in crypto, what are you doing? Because it returns you know 10X your money in a month. You definitely, there's like this underlying feeling that if you're not a millionaire by 30, you're a failure. I have definitely experienced that where you feel like you're not making it in this world. You don't have all these cars or you don't have this business that's running. You don't have in your bio seven figure e-com guy. And so that's definitely a feeling. And I wanna focus on this video on what you can actually control. So reality is debt crisis of Americans. So many Americans are in debt and it's hard to see. They might not show it. They might have huge credit card debt or everything's on loans. That is the reality. Very few people are millionaires, right? To hit the million dollar net worth mark, you're still at the top few percent regardless of age. This is percentage wise, very few people are millionaires. And you don't know people's advantages or luck. I've had a lot of advantages. I was born with a lot of advantages that others didn't have. And so I was able to hit net worth of 100K by age 27. That's also because I was given a lot of things in life. Like I'm very fortunate to have the background I have. You don't see people's advantages or the luck. A lot of people invested in something like some of these cryptos people blindly invested in and hit 100K net worth in like a month because of how insane that market is. All right, why I've made this video part two. I just went through a really tough time in real estate. It took me like two and a half, three years. I'm just now recovering now. And after experiencing those devastating losses, I still have 100K net worth, all equity in my house. I'm making about 6K to 8K net monthly income at the age of 30. Even though there are so many people on social media doing so much better than me financially, statistically speaking, I'm still kind of near the top. If I'm hitting 8K a net, that's 100K a year net at the age of 30. And so I'm on my path to $1 million net worth by August 2025 when I turn 35, and that's my goal, and I'm gonna share it with you. Let's begin. Here's a very step-by-step -step process you can follow. Step one, your living budget. This is going to be the highest expense that basically everyone has on their personal balance sheet. You're generally gonna start renting, it's smart. Even though I'm a huge proponent of owning, I think it's smart to start renting. Live with roommates. The amount of people that tell me that they like can't live with roommates is insane to me. If you don't make much money and you're starting out on this journey, remember year zero, you're gonna start year zero and you're gonna look at hit 100K net worth by year five, we're gonna start by living with roommates. It's the easiest way to drop your expenses. 
living well below your means. This was actually my apartment when I first moved to Vegas, not in a nice area. I was living alone, dumb of me. I should have lived with roommates, especially when you're moving to a new city. Living with roommates can benefit you a lot and you save money. And if you can find a place that's furnished, that'll save you money on furniture as well. So what I do is I offer rooms to people for that are furnished and include utilities at a very fair rate. They actually pay a lot less than what I was paying there. If you add up all the expenses that come with living, I was paying like $900 a month to live alone in Vegas and not a nice area, not a nice apartment complex. Step two, food budget is gonna be one of your highest expenses as well. I made a video just a couple years ago about how I was eating for under $100 a month. I did this to prove a purpose because the amount of people that told me that you can't eat for under $100 a month, you can't eat healthy and eat for uh, you know a very reasonable expense was like mind blowing to me. So I had to prove them wrong. So here's the goal is live, uh, have a food budget of under $150 a month. There's no alcohol or eating out at restaurants. I know this sounds crazy, I did it. Generally, you're gonna have a Costco or Sam's Club membership. I have Costco, $120 a year, that's $10 a month. If you look at the $150 a month towards food, I attribute that $10 Costco expense to that number. And you can also get much cheaper gas there as well. So I would highly recommend investing in a Costco or Sam's Club membership allows you to buy food in bulk. And yes, you can eat healthy on a budget. I showed it in that video, but if you really analyze what you're eating, you can eat healthy on a budget. I'm talking $150 to $200 a month max. Step three, car budget. Car is actually generally the second highest expense that you'll have. This is a Ford Fusion that I bought 2011. It's a beautiful car. It was, it was, to me, it was a luxury car. It was $6,500 that I bought a couple years ago. I have, actually haven't had a car since September 2019. During the whole fiasco of losing all my money in real estate, I sold my car because I needed the cash. And so I've been just fine. And I haven't had a car in a year and a half. That isn't possible for everyone because I've been able to work from home, so obviously that changes things. But what your goal should be is to get the lowest cost possible for your car. You do not need to buy luxury. To me, you're either buying a functional vehicle or a luxury. If you can't find, or if you can't afford a huge, awesome, exotic vehicle, I don't see the reason for spending $30,000 on a car. Why? Because a car doesn't get you laid. For some reason, guys in their 20s and 30s think that going out and getting a nice car gets, gets them laid. That's never been true, especially if you're buying a midsize vehicle like a Mercedes or BMW, huge car expense, and you're not getting laid because of it. In my opinion, you either go super exotic or you have a functional car. You definitely go used. You never buy new. And if you can, take the bus. I know it sounds crazy to like a lot of people, but it's, my experience with the bus has not been that bad. Uh, it saves it saves you a lot of money. And if you're, again, starting from quickest path from zero to, let's say, year five of 100K net worth, if you can go the first year on a bus as opposed to a car, you'll your upside is way higher because you'll save so much more money. Education. I graduated from Georgia Southern University. So college, I know a lot of people like hate college. Sure. The goal, I put it at the bottom. Most important thing is employable skills. You can go to college if you're getting an employable skill, right? If you don't know what an employable skill is, then you should probably spend time thinking about that first before taking on a bunch of debt. There are many great degrees at college still, and you can do a two-year school. Out here in Vegas, you could do two-year schools for like significantly cheaper than a four-year, and you can still get employable skills. There are awesome trade schools available. Some people wanna go become plumbers or electricians. Those are awesome opportunities for people. I took coding boot camps. That's one opportunity. If you're 18 and wanna look at some alternative, there are also plenty of courses online that you can look into. Coursera, Udemy, Skillshare, and there are legitimate gurus, even though I trash on a lot of them. Uh, there are legitimate gurus who can provide a course that can help you, you know, help show you a way to start making money online or, you know, whatever, you know, some type of marketable skill that you can use to get a job. So that's the important with education, employable skills. Step five, now you're looking at employment. Here I am with the championship trophy. I used to work with the Houston Rockets. Most people are W-2 employees. I know there's like this movement on social media where it's like, leave your nine to five job. It's the worst thing ever. Most people are built for W-2 work. And again, we're talking about starting from zero. Most people don't have enough skills to go start a business or be some like successful entrepreneur. People who start a business, almost all of them fail. There's a reason why, because it's really, really difficult and very few people have the skills to run a successful business from the start. So you're generally better off suited going and finding a W-2 job. So that's why I say job or starting a business. You gotta figure out, you know, do you wanna start a business or do you wanna start a job? I personally think most people should start a job, especially if you're in your 20s. There's no better way to start than earn some skills and you get paid to do it. Jobs provide stability. You'll see why that's really important in just a minute. Stability is really important. Most people need that stability. Most people do not function well in instability. Some of the best entrepreneurs do, but very few people do. So that's why you need stability. And you don't, I just just a reminder, you don't need to be earning 100K yet. Just because you, you left college and you're only making $32,000 a year, it's not the end of the world. You can make significantly amounts of money 
uh, down the road. You don't, don't worry about making 100K salary right from the start. Now, after you educate yourself, you've got the job, now you can enter skill acquisition mode. Here I am trying to learn YouTube. This was back when I was getting no views. I was in my buddy Alex Felice's garage. That's my buddy Mache just sitting there. We were trying to figure it out. We still couldn't figure it out. But this is a skill I was trying to acquire. Reason why you get the stable job is because you can go through this phase of trying to acquire a new skill. I was getting paid. Sure, I was working. I had to drive to work and all that it took up a lot of time, but it allowed on weekends and at nights to acquire a new skill. That new skill is now making me 100 grand a year. I had the long runway because I had the job. I was able to pay my bills and it allowed me time. It allowed me that runway of years to figure out YouTube. There was no stress. I didn't have to stress about making money today on YouTube and that allowed me to gain skills such that I can now have the exponential growth. This phase also allows you to figure out what you really wanna do in life. For me, it was YouTube. That's not for everyone. Everyone's got you know their own little thing. You can have your job and then in your free time, you can spend time trying to figure out what you really wanna do with this life. You can also figure out what guru to follow. Yes, there are awesome gurus on social media. There are plenty, even though I trash plenty, there are a plenty of awesome gurus. And what I would recommend is following someone that you know you vibe with in the sense that you really like what they do, you like the path they took, you feel like it's a path you could take, you follow that person and basically mimic what they did. And uh, age doesn't matter, I add that because, again, this video is about starting from zero, forget the age, starting from zero to 100K net worth in possibly five years. You can start a new skill at age 50. You can be a YouTuber at age 50, there's plenty of awesome YouTubers who are old. You can learn new skills, you can, whatever it is, age doesn't matter. Step seven, now is the phase when you can start improving your credit. Credit is incredibly important in America. You can <laughs> save so much money long-term with credit and uh, there are gonna be people who are just starting out, just got your first job, just leaving college, who've got okay credit, maybe you come from a good background, your parents taught you good credit habits, but a lot of people don't. And so this is the phase where you can start really working on your credit because you have the job, you're steadily employed, you're trying to learn new skills, and in the future you might wanna buy a house or get a new car you're gonna to wanna to improve your credit. So you can start by getting the secured credit card if needed. If you need to start the process, if you don't come from a good background or you haven't been taught good fundamentals about credit, you can go to the bank and start a secured credit card for $500 to start building that credit. Yes, multiple credit cards are beneficial. Forget what people told you, your parents probably did not teach you the right fundamentals about credit. Credit is a system, it's an algorithm. All it is is a game. Once you learn the, the rules of the game and how it's played, you can win. And the creditors wanna see you with multiple credit cards. They wanna see that you can borrow and pay it back. Now the important part is that you're responsible. You're a responsible borrower. And so you're going to have multiple credit cards, but you're going to spend very little on them. You're gonna put your Netflix, you're gonna buy your gas, you're gonna buy your groceries on the credit cards. We're talking 100, 200, $300 a month. You pay it off in cash every single month. You do that over two or three credit cards, your credit score will improve. And again, we're not talking about, I'm not trying to get you rich right away. We're not hitting 100K in the first year. We're doing it over time. So this is building up the foundation. This might take two or three years. It's okay, it doesn't need to be done today. A couple years, you'll have a great credit score. This is also a period where you could go through credit repair if needed. If you feel like a credit repair company can help you out, that might be something worth investing in. More credit lines, the better. Yes, the more credit lines, the better because the creditors wanna see that you can borrow money in multiple different ways. This is a car loan, student loans, credit cards, uh, for me, I have a Home Depot card. So I have multiple personal credit cards. I have a Home Depot card. I can go get a car loan. I have a mortgage, right? You want multiple lines of credit. It is better for your credit score. But the important thing is that you maintain a low debt to income ratio. This is how much debt do you have? Your monthly debt versus your monthly income. So yes, I'm mentioning going and getting multiple lines of credit, but it's important that you live below your means and that you your debt doesn't rise to ridiculous rates. We'll go over that in a minute, but uh, your debt to income is a very important ratio. If you're spending money on credit cards, you need to make sure it's still very low in comparison to your income. The key is only buy needs and low cost wants. You should only be buying you know, food, groceries, your car expense, maybe rent, whatever, you, whatever your needs are, those need to be spent, obviously. But then low cost wants, you should be not taking ridiculous thousand dollar vacations if you're not making that much money. You should be, you know, there. Every, look, we all have wants in life. We wanna go eat in a nice restaurant every now and then, or we wanna go do something fun for the day and spend a couple hundred bucks, that's okay. But it should be low cost. Now, dating, this is an important aspect. Here I am eating an ice cream sandwich. I love these things, by the way. I used to make these all the time. Oatmeal raisin cookies with like strawberry ice cream, so good. So I did pick up for two years. This is an important element of people starting out is because uh, I'm mentioning all these like frugal ways of living and people like, oh, you need to date and all this. I did pick up for two years. 
I always had the rule, first date always under $10. That is something I will always obey because of how important it is. You need to figure out on the first date, do you two like each other? You don't need to go out and spend a bunch of money, but the key is be very attentive of how you're spending your time and focus. I'm speaking mostly to the young males because I'm a guy, I don't know how it is for women, but when you're a young guy, you're gonna be out chasing women, you're gonna be trying to date and have fun. You need to be very attentive of how you're spending your time and focus. This is the most important time of your life, especially if we're looking at the uh, the path from zero to 100K net worth. That initial, that inertia at the start is very, very important. And if you're out chasing women all the time, you're out running around trying to date. I did, hey look, I spent two years in pickup. This was like all I did, all I cared about for two years. I went to the nightclubs in Houston six nights a week. I stayed out until 2, 3 a.m four hours a night picking up women, this is all I did. So uh, you can go out and chase and have your fun. Like I'm not saying don't have fun, please do. But the last point, chasing versus building. One thing you have to you know, think about is, are you running around chasing women, trying to date and having all this fun dating versus building? It's very hard to do both. If you're chasing women and on the dating apps and going on a lot of dates, that is time that could be spent building something. And so it's something to think about that's only, only you know best for you. Step nine, your 401k or IRA. I included a picture of Grant Cardone. This was back when I like loved these gurus and was a big fan of Grant. Of course, he would probably not recommend 401ks. I actually don't either. Again, we're, this is the quickest path from zero to 100k net worth. I don't think putting money, your net income, when you're making $35,000 a year, putting $500 a month in your 401k. 401k, you can't touch for like 30 years. The goal of this video is to show you how to get to a high income very quickly. And so there is an opportunity cost. When you are putting your net income, let's say you're able to save up $500 a month. If you're putting that into a 401k, yes, it's gonna grow. It is a great investment. Do not let me, uh, let me convince you it's not. Most people, it's great to put in a 401k over time. But it is way easier to invest in a 401k when you have a high income. The goal should be to get to high income first. And I include this little example down at the bottom. In 2018, someone could have started putting like 5K a year into their 401k, there's a company match, yada, yada. It becomes 50K, 10X in three years. Oh my God, that's so amazing. But if the, over those three years they focused on gaining a high income, they can start from zero in 2021, but you're gonna trump the person that started in 2018. Person in 2018 still has the same income. Sure, they've got a little higher 401k balance, but in 2021, you can start maxing every year because your income's much higher. You're gonna make significantly more if you just wait a couple years until you get that high income. That's just my opinion. Step 10, mentorship. Now that you've got steady employment, you're starting to acquire new skills, now's the time you can start looking for mentorship. If you're not spending all your time on YouTube University, I don't know what you're doing. I think it's the greatest resource right now because it's free. Definitely buy YouTube Premium as well, $12, and you can get so much knowledge basically for $12 a month. This is my meetup here in Las Vegas. I run a meetup every single month. These meetups are awesome. Some of the people that come are killing it in real estate, and they do so, so, so well, and they will teach the people who attend these meetups more than anything on YouTube. So that's something to look forward to if you have some meetups in your town you can check out. There are also plenty of people who offer paid mentorship. It's not something I've ever signed up for, but I do know a lot of people run successful paid mentorship programs who have a lot of successful students. So that's also something to think about. Step 11, the best part, house hacking. It's the best returns I've ever seen from a reliable investment. This is my first house hack. It was a condo in Las Vegas Country Club right by the strip. That's the Westgate right there in the background. It's beautiful. I'm gonna show you some quick examples. I can honestly talk house hacking all day. So there's generally three different types of house hacks. We're gonna go townhome, a multifamily, and a single family. We're gonna start with this one, 240,000. These are all examples right now on on the MLS on Las, in La, here in Las Vegas, 240,000. You can see that it's really nice. This is a, a pretty upscale townhome. It's in a nice community. Hopefully I'm not scrolling too fast for those of you. You also get a garage. And so I actually ran the numbers for you to see what it looks like. Here's the house hack for the townhome. I keep it here on the left for your DTI. This is some, if you're not really too familiar, research DTI and its importance, but this is something to think about. Right now I'm seeing with a 5% down payment for conventional, I'm seeing uh, the lender I use, 45% DTI ratio, and then FHA, he goes as high as 55, which by the way is really high. But this is something to consider, is where your main income is at, what your monthly debt is at, and what your PITI plus PMI is for this house hack and where that puts your DTI. It's really important so you can see when you drop to 100, now you can qualify. That's why it's so important to have that monthly debt. This is your credit cards, your, uh, your car payments, any type of student loan, it's important to keep that low. But I give you the numbers right here. This is the actual numbers for this townhome. For a 5% down payment, 
purchase price of 240, you're gonna bring 14,400. Again, the, the reason why I do these steps is the first few steps were about getting stable employment, maybe getting some side income and living really frugally so that you can save up over a year or two to get the down payment on your first house hack. So 14, 000, a lot of people don't have 14,000 in cash. Again, this might take a year or two to acquire that much cash. Your PITI and PMI is 1,200 a month. Here's your total expenses. $1,900 a month. I can tell you right now that those rooms could easily get 600 a month. It's a three bed, three bath townhome. You could easily get 600 a month, maybe 700 a month pushing it, but we're, I'm gonna go on the conservative side and say 1,200. You also get principal pay down because you are paying down your mortgage every single month. I ran the numbers, it's 380 a month. So you're gonna be bringing in 1580 a month of actual income to you. This, your cash flow and your principal pay down. So the cash flow each year, it's gonna cost you about $350 a month to operate this place. But the reason why I added this section, previous living expenses, what a lot of people don't consider is that uh, someone could be living for 700 a month elsewhere, which by the way is really cheap. A lot of people spend like 1,000 or 1,200 and we'll see the numbers change. Let's say you're spending $1,000 a month elsewhere Right, each year you're spending $12,000 a month. Well, the purpose with house hacking is you went from spending that 12,000, okay? You were spending 12,000 on living a year and now you're not spending anything, right? Because when you're house hacking, you're, you're not paying yourself rent, if that makes sense, right? You're receiving rent from the other two. Now you're paying your living expenses, but you're receiving that income, but you're not paying rent to a landlord because you are the landlord. So hypothetically, if you were paying the same amount you were paying to yourself, that's why I include that number. And you can see that the real cash flow is now $8,100 a year. The return, 57%, huge returns. And then I also included the house act so you can get an FHA loan, 3.5% down. I generally prefer 5% down, but some of you may not have the funds. You may only have roughly 11, 12,000. So you'll need the three and a half percent down. Real return, 64%, pretty crazy. Okay, well another opportunity or another option that a lot of people look at is the multifamily, 480,000 here in Vegas. Now keep in mind that all of you live in different markets. The, the price doesn't really matter as much. When you go to the Midwest, Cincinnati, you can get multifamilies for 180,000. They just don't rent as much. So the important thing is looking at the principles, looking at the idea of house hacking versus the actual numbers. Um, but I included the townhome because some of you in California or New York, you know, townhome might be the only legitimate option if you're first starting out. Some of you live in great markets that have a lot of multifamily opportunities. So I'll show you that this one as well. This is a pretty nice multifamily. I've actually toured this complex before. Not the nicest, it's not the best place to live. However, this unit is pretty nice. You could for sure rent these by the room or you could rent to families. And again, it is a four unit for 480,000. Nice little community. We'll look at the numbers for the fourplex. Now, one thing to keep in mind, and the reason why I keep up this DTI chart is lenders will take the income on a fourplex. So for some of you out there who might have a little trouble with qualifying, maybe your monthly debt's a little high, you can actually qualify with uh, using the income from the other units in this multifamily, which benefits some of you if you're right there on the on the edge of qualifying, go on that multifamily route, that extra income really boosts. So you can see that you get that extra income, right? If you drop this down to 100, the PITI and PMI is a little high because it's a 480 purchase price. So that's why it's a little higher, but you can still get down under that 50% DTI, you can still qualify for FHA. Just I'm just throwing some numbers just to give you a good idea. So in this, example property, roughly $3,000 a month of expenses, and your monthly income is gonna be about 3160. I can tell you right now that you can for sure, well, they actually list the, on this specific property, they list the income. So it's about 2,400 from the other three units. And really you could probably get, if you wanted to rent uh, the other room, so you have your own unit of a 2-1 or 2-2, two -two, you could rent the other room in your unit for $400 a month, right? So let's add that, oh, the numbers, just, oh, whoops. It's 2,800, sorry, need to add the 400. So now your return goes up much higher. The principal pay down, because the loan is much bigger, you're getting a bigger principal pay down. It's 3,500 a month of income, right? Now you're cash flowing $6,600 a year. That's why a lot of people love going this multifamily route if you can afford it, if you can save up 30 grand. Previous living expense, again, we were saying if it's $700 a month elsewhere, you're now not spending anything. So we gotta account for that, right? So now you're making $15,000 of real money every single year between cash flow and principal pay down. And this is not including appreciation, which I believe we're gonna see one to 3% for sure over the foreseeable future. If you own this property over the next 10 years, I can tell you that it's gonna appreciate at least two or 3% per year. And that's not even accounting for it. That's probably another you know, 4,800 a year to possibly $10,000 a year of appreciation. But anyway, you can see the returns, 52%. But I can tell you, coming up right now, is the best way to house hack. Um, if this property is available in two months, 
I'm gonna offer on it. I've, I'm gonna have funds in two months to be able to buy my next house hack. 400,000, five bed, three bath, 24, almost 2,400 square feet. Looks beautiful, beautiful interior, really well done, a lot of room. That's what's really important about house hacks is if you can get a house four or five beds with spacious, a lot of room, then this is the best option for you. There's a lot of room, really pretty colors. It reminds me of like a beach resort house. Plenty of room for furniture, plenty of bathrooms to cover for everyone. And then there's even opportunity if you wanna go like crazy, there's room in the back. If you wanna spend another 30 to 50,000, you could build a casita and rent that for at least 1,000 a month. But let's check out the numbers on the single family. Again, the DTI, you do not get the house hack income from a house. That's the downside of renting or doing a house hack with a single family is the lender's not gonna account for the rent. But I can tell you, you can easily get 2,400. That would be for the four roommates, right? It's a five bed house, you're gonna live in one, you're gonna rent the four rooms, I could get 600 a month easily in a house like that tomorrow. You furnish it up and then you rent, you include utilities, you could easily get 600 room, probably 650. If you could get 650, right, numbers get even crazier. Monthly expense of around 2,500, this is with 5% down. Your monthly income between principal pay down and the cash flow is going to be 3,200. Your cash flow for the year, 8,200. Previous living expenses of 700 a month means you're gonna bring in almost $17,000 a year. Yes, that is real money. That is the cash flow and your principal. You are building equity. It is money, almost a 70% return. But over here on a house hack of 3.5% down, 81% return because you're bringing $18,000 to the table and you're making almost 15,000. Yes, these re returns are real. That's why house hacking, to me, it's it's the greatest thing you can do in your 20s, the easiest way to start making money. And yes, you can do it if you have a girlfriend, if you have a fiance, plenty of people do it. Plenty of markets have casitas, like here in Vegas, casita is really popular. If you can find a house with a casita, you could live in the casita where you have your own space. You could do the girlfriend thing and have your own space and then rent each room in the house. That's a great way to do it. Step 12 is your upside move. Here's a picture of me when I first took over this house hack. 11 people were paying me every single month, 11 checks coming in. So for me, my upside moves are real estate investing, YouTube, and being a real estate agent here in Las Vegas. I just took my test, it passed, and so I'll have my license in a couple weeks. Those are my upside plays. Those are the moves I can make that will exponentially grow my income. For you, it may be starting a business. This may be a great time to start a business because you have your stable job, you have a house hack where your living expenses are covered, you have that extra income coming in, maybe you have a little bit of money to start a business that you've always wanted to start, or you could just ask a celebrity out on a date. There's no greater clout move than going out on a date with a celebrity. Maybe that'll boost your social media profiles enough to start a business. Uh, but it's very important at this time to solidify what your upside move is. For me, it was YouTube. It's all I was doing. I really wanted to be a YouTuber, and so I solidified that YouTube would be my upside move, and then I went all in. It's very important during this phase that you go all in on whatever it is that's gonna grow your income exponentially. Step 13, now you can start investing because you have that extra income coming in, you can start investing. A lot of people try to start investing when they're just starting out instead of focusing on attaining a higher income. When you're making $30,000 a year and you can put $250 a month in your 401k or the stock market, it's very hard to actually make money. Even if you make 20% returns a year, it's, like it's very hard to actually grow that money enough to make you know, actual money. Um, so it's important once you start getting that higher net income, you have multiple streams of income from your roommates, the house hack, you have your stable job, maybe another side income, you have multiple streams of income coming in, that income can then be put to investments. Here I am outside of the fourplex I purchased here in Las Vegas. I only needed $20,000 down because I did a seller carry. And uh, for you, you still need that 20,000, right, to start making money. There's the whole phrase, you need money to start making money or whatever. Uh, this is a good time to start having that money coming in. You can save up maybe for your second house hack. Now that a year's gone by, you've saved up enough. Maybe it took you three years to get that first house hack. Well now, because you have all of that income coming in, it might only take you a year to get that second house hack. Or you can go buy an investment property. This is also a stage where maybe you're growing the business that you started on the side. It's growing enough where you can leave your job. You have a steady enough income coming in from that side business where it makes sense to leave the stable job. Some of you invest in crypto, that's a good investment. For some people who really know crypto, that's a good way. Now that you've got a few thousand coming in every month, you can start trading crypto. And now is the time where you can consider investing in 401k, in my opinion, because you have more money coming in, you can grow your 401k significantly faster. Step 14 is the 100x play. This is where I'm at. 
you should be on pace for 100K net worth very quickly by now, if you, especially if you have an investment property or if you have your second house hack, you have at least one and you have your stable job. Multiple forms of income are coming in. You should have a high net income every year. You should start investing. And after two or three years, you should be able to cross that 100K net worth. This is the time when you can start thinking long term. All of your needs are met and your bills are paid. It reduces the stress on you know paying your bills, paying your credit card on time, paying rent and all that. Those stressors should be assuaged and you should have the ability to start thinking long term. What's your huge upside play? Mine, I wanna attain multiple house hacks. Here in Las Vegas, I think this is the biggest upside play is attaining houses and renting by the room. The cash flow is absurd. It's something that I'm gonna do over the next couple of years. YouTube for me is my upside play. It's already doing very well. I think I can grow it over the next couple of years. Real estate agent here in Las Vegas, hopefully I'm able to attain a few clients per year that uh, bring in significant side income. Right now the average commission is like 10 or 12,000 in Las Vegas, right? If I get a couple people that watch my videos that wanna buy or sell a house here in Las Vegas, or maybe they want a house hack, that's a big side income. And possibly starting a business around credit. I wanna do credit repair to tie into that real estate agent business. Maybe possibly business funding down the road, learn a little bit more. I would love to start businesses in that area. Good question is, what are yours? This is a good time now that you've reached step 14, you can start thinking, what are the 100X plays for you? How can you go from 5K a month to 500K a month starting your own business? Something to consider. You are showering in money and now. That is the end of the presentation. I wanna thank you so much for sticking to the end if you're still watching. I hope this was beneficial. Again, the, the point of this is that you can watch it now and then down the road, you can watch it again so that you are tracking each step of the way. To me, I think this is the safest and easiest way to go from zero to 100K net worth most reliably. There's obviously some people that are having, uh, they're gonna have much bigger upsides. They're gonna start a business or they're entrepreneur focused or they invest in the right crypto and it takes them to the moon right away. But to me, this is for most people who don't have certain luxuries, this is the way to do it. I wanna thank you so much for watching.